Good evening and welcome on this wintry night to the town board meeting. I'm Sue Crane. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can't write. <laughs> well, the good news is that we do not have three feet of snow. Buffalo does. Yes. <laughs> so that's the good news. Thank you all. This is a, a night that we try to get board and committee and uh, department reports in so that everybody's aware of what's going on. Um, so there are a couple of announcements that we wanted to bring to the public's attention, and we'll hear more about them as we move along in the months ahead. I was um, visited by an official from Dutchess County um, who, who, t who let me know that there have been a lot of questions about Linden Avenue Bridge. And um, he wanted to let us know that he would like to come and talk with us in uh, January and explain the process that, thank you, will, will um, take place next year in the spring to repair that bridge. So we can expect a visit by two uh, DPW officials from Dutchess County in the first meeting in January to talk with us and to inform the public. It is going to be closed for a long time. They're going to completely replace the bridge and it will be impassable for some time. So he will be here to explain why that is necessary and how we can adjust to it before it actually happens. It's going to be a, it's going to be a very different summer this year, but they feel it's very important that that bridge gets replaced. It's, it's, um, it's, it's not in good condition, to say the least. So I wanted to alert you to that, that that's coming, and we'll hear more about that in, in the January meeting. Um, the second thing is, is similar. The town board is as you may know, reconfiguring the parking lot to add some handicapped accessible spaces, and we've applied for some uh, funding from Community Development Block Grant to help us in that regard. Um, you will see that there has been some mov movement in the parking lot in terms of uh, barriers and the fence, et cetera, and I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that we will be closing while it's cold and while there's probably less activity here than there might be in the summer, we'll be closing one entrance to the parking lot so that the north entrance will be both the entrance and exit. There will not be two. It, we feel it's very unsafe to have cars coming and going in two different lanes and um, we've had agreement by a lot of people who, who know about traffic patterns and safety in parking lot. And I want to thank Teresa Burke and her team for helping affect some of the change now while we're um, just trying to get our eyes on it and get used to the idea that the traffic will be different. So be alert when you come into the town hall parking lot. It is going to look different. Employees will park in a different space to leave space for those people who need handicapped uh, parking and for visitors. So um, you will see some cones in front of the southern entrance to the park to the uh, parking lot. If you knock them down, it, you'll probably be okay, but we hope you won't. So, so um, the north en entrance will be the one we're asking everyone to use. Um, there was a little announcement that came by today that I thought was something that might be of interest to everyone because we've talked about the rabies um, 
issues in pets and everybody wants to keep their pets safe. And the Dutchess County Department of Health is sponsoring a vaccination clinic for pets on Saturday, November 22nd at the Dutchess County SPCA in Violet Avenue in Hyde Park. So it's um, non-residents will be charged a $10 fee, but otherwise the rabies shots are free for dogs and cats and domestic ferrets, should you have one. <laughs> so there we have that. And the last thing is a great honor for me to read to you a resolution that the town board has prepared in honor of the dedication and work of Paul Fredericks, who has been a friend of the town of Red Hook for a long time. And Paul has had some health challenges and is at home, and I um, think that he probably would, I hope he would enjoy this. In any event, I'd like to read the resolution and then a letter that I wrote to Paul. The Town of Red Hook Resolution honoring Paul M. Fredericks. Whereas Paul Fredericks has for many decades served the residents of the Town of Red Hook in a variety of roles. Whereas Paul Fredericks was a first a member and then chair of the Board of Assessment Review. Whereas Paul Fredericks served as the town zoning enforcement officer. Whereas Paul Fredericks was a charter member of the Edgar Benson Historical Society. Whereas Paul Fredericks was integral to the successful restoration of the Elmendorf Inn. Whereas Paul Fredericks has been a longtime member of the Red Hook Chamber of Commerce, promoting economic development in the town. Whereas Paul Fredericks was appointed a member and is now the chair of St. Margaret's Committee. Therefore, the Red Hook Town Board on this day, November 18, 2014, does hereby pay tribute to Paul M. Fredericks for his willingness to contribute his time and energy to the town and for his unfailing dedication to both the past and the future of the Red Hook community. Decades. <laughs> Decades. And so I wrote, Paul and I were in school together. He's a little bit older than I am. <laughs> Paul was, as one of the other things Paul did, was he was president of the student council when he was in high school. Do you remember that, Bill? <coughs> Bill's memories. I remember Paul as, in the 1950s, he was a right-handed pitcher with the Red Hook High School baseball team. Ah, there you go. <laughs> there he was, was also... in those days a, a pitcher for the New York Yankees named Vic Rashi. And Paul Fredericks was the Vic Rashi of the Red Hook High School old baseball team. He was a big right-hander, and he was very successful. He pitched especially a perfect, you know, almost a perfect game at Germantown one year. But anyway, he was really well known for that way before he got involved in the community affairs. Well, now there you go. There's perfect evidence. <laughs> That's how that, I remember. Perfect evidence that sports in childhood leads to leadership. <laughs> so I wrote to Paul, dear Paul, from time to time as supervisor, I am pleased, together with the town board, to acknowledge extraordinary contributions from certain of our citizens who have offered time, talent, and treasure for the overall benefit of our community. You are one. Red Hook, this place we call home, has truly been enriched by your personal generosity. Thank you, Paul, for your many years of service, and we hope that you will accept this resolution in your honor, knowing it is offered with sincere admiration and heartfelt gratitude to you for sharing many gifts with us all. In sincere appreciation, Sue. And I thank you for your recognition of him. He's, he's a great guy and has offered much to all of us. And we wish him well and keep him in our prayers and thoughts. So that is mine for announcements. And I guess, Jim, I'm going to turn to you and see if you have any announcements. I do not, Sue. The only thing I have was in my folder here is this, um, <clears throat> this thing about the Hudson Valley Cash Coalition provides free, reliable tax preparation assistance to low 
income individual families and seniors throughout Dutchess and Orange counties. Um, I, we just received this in October and we want to announce it tonight. Mm -hmm. And in Dutchess County, it's Linda Eddy. And we have a phone number and, a, <clears throat> and an email address here for her if anyone should need assistance in doing that. Um, I will give you the phone number. It's 845 475 7500. And it's Letty, L E D D Y, at duchesscap.org is the email. Thank you, Tim. Oh, sir. Brenda, how about you? Do you have announcements tonight? I don't. Okay. Susan, did you want to? Sue McCann? Thanks, Sue. No, not tonight. Thank you. Okay. And no. Carrie? No. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, so is there any public comment before we get started? Hi, how are you? <laughs> any public comment before we get started? Okay. Um, so we can kick right off. Uh, Brenda, I don't know if you're prepared to talk about the connectivity product project, and are you going to do it during the grant section? Uh, whatever your pleasure. I have a tiny report on it. Okay. Yeah, Why don't you do that right time. up front? Why don't you do that right up front? Okay, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Um, this is the pilot project for which the town of Red Hook was selected to work with Cornell University and the Hudson River Estuary Program to assess a model developed by Cornell. The model provides output that helps communities address habitat connectivity. We are identifying conservation opportunities and tools for connectivity pr protection. One of our, our most, most valuable resources is agricultural land, and this hadn't been considered in the initial model, but now because of our input, it is now included since it does provide habitat for some species. We also provided our existing community preservation plan and our two biodiversity studies so the model could use this information as well. Initially, the model used uh, uh, forested lands and especially riparian buffer, uh, forested riparian buffers as its um, input. So we are adding to the data that they're using on the model, um, data that's unique to us. Additionally, we are considering other communities' needs where land use, use tools might not be as advanced as they are in Red Hook. One tool that we discussed was defining critical environmental areas, which would then be subject to seeker review. We've held three stakeholder meetings, and representatives from the planning board and both villages have been attending, along with the planning firms AKRF, which is a firm from White Plains who actually wrote the uh, uh, application for which we uh, won the award, and Green Plan, our own planners, and the Hudson River Estuary representatives attend as well. The last stakeholder meeting is December 3rd. We've, um, as I said, we've had three. This is the final one, and after that, the town will receive a conservation plan that has, uh, has been customized uh, to our needs. Thank you, Brenda. So before we move on to the other reports, could I just clarify one thing about the sidewalk grant? Mm -hmm. um, I think there was some confusion about the sidewalk grant, and I just wanted to clarify that, in fact, the uh, sidewalk will go from Town Hall to Hard Scrabble on the east side of South Broadway as well as uh, complete the west side of uh, Little Missing Park by the laundromat. And there was a question at our last town board meeting about trees. Uh, someone was concerned, and rightfully so, about trees that would have to come down. And I just wanted to mention that uh, several of those trees that will come down are uh, declining, so it's a good thing they will come down. Uh, and, if, and there will be also some healthy trees that have to come down. But in the scope of the grant, we included an estimate for 30 new trees. So uh, in the end, we'll have more trees and more healthy trees there. And I wanted to clarify that. We also have uh, funding for some uh, landscaping and special spots. Great. Thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. OK, so um, <clears throat> we're at the point where we can start on board reports. And there is a Zoning Board of Appeals monthly report. I think that's Jim, your, Ross, yours. if I give you the short version. We've had a few, <clears throat> in fact, I'll, I'll take it from my own notes from the, their last meeting was last Wednesday. We had a couple public hearings. 
One, the, uh, the <clears throat> public hearing will be continued next time. Um, then we had uh, uh, Norman Gregg came in for three, uh, just as a review of an appeal. He's applying for an appeal for a uh, project he wants to do up on his farm up there. And that's pretty much it. So that involved three actual appeal applications, and they were all reviewed. And the public hearing on that, I believe, is December 10th. Is that the first <coughs> Wednesday in December? Um. Or the second Wednesday? Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Wednesday, December 10th. And that's when the actual public hearing on those will be, and, and as well as the continuation of the, of the other one that was discussed. And that has to do with the... Um, the farm at Montgomery Place Orchards, uh, the, the, the couple that manages and runs the farm for historic Hudson Valley um, changed their, their farm workers camp. They put a new trailer where there had been an old one historically. And, um, and so the problem was basically between them and historic Hudson Valley, the discussion was historic Hudson Valley didn't want it, although it was placed at the original farm camp and protested that they did it, and, and so there was a stop work order, although, you know, in their interpretation of their agreement with the way they leased the farm from them, they had the right. So it was brought before our Zoning Board of Appeals, and that public hearing will be continued. Uh, they were encouraged to see if they could get together and work out their differences, so, you know, to continue the, the farm help housing, as well as the, as the very successful farm down there at the historic Hudson Valley mm -hmm. site. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Good. I think that's one of the oldest continuously run farms in New York State. Yeah, that, I, th I think at least the very the oldest uh, fruit farm or apple farm, yes. And, it may be, and, the, and the people that run it do, do a beautiful job for the store mm -hmm. and running it. You know, the whole Montgomery place the stand and everything else has been they do. very it's nice and successful. So they hopefully that will work out. Good. Thank you, Jim. Um, planning board? Has anyone got a planning board report? I do not. I did not get to no. the meeting last night. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, we should we should say that we have appointed a new secretary for the Zoning Board of Appeals, who is Ann Rubin, and um, yes, thank you for she is. She is filling filling that vacancy, and um, and nicely, I, I think she's going to be very yes. And at the very meeting good last Wednesday, she both she she was present as well as Jackie, our present mm -hmm. secretary, didn't mm -hmm. help her get a mm -hmm. hold of the ropes and take it from there. Yep. Right. So that's good. Okay, and I don't think we have an ethics board report, so that's mm -hmm. a good thing. So we'll move right on to department reports. Uh, Brenda, do you have anything for animal control? I didn't get anything, no. Okay. Uh, uh, ZBA, we just did. Jim just did it. Jim just read ZBA. Um, and this next report would be Scott Hobson. Scott, would you like to give this yourself? Um, Thank you. Yeah, a couple, a couple things. Uh, from the assessors, we, we uh, are continuing our sales and valuation analysis for the for the next roll year coming up. Um, since we last talked, I've hired uh, two data collectors who have, uh, many people have probably seen around town and are uh, uh, collecting and verifying the information that we have on all of the commercial properties. Uh, you may have noticed in a, in a lot of cases the, the information that's on parcel access is not accurately reflected, and we're trying to correct that as we go along, as well as um, uh, correct uh, corresponding values if, if, if it's warranted. Um, I've met twice already with the state and county representatives to continue our uh, valuation modeling, um, and that's an ongoing requirement. Um, so far, in the short time since our data collectors have started, we've uh, actually gone out and, and visited and collected information on 118 properties. Um, the, the, the guys are going uh, very well. Uh, they're happy to, 
to explain what they're doing whenever they're at any given residence. Um, we're continuing trying to keep up with that. Um, by that I mean Diana and I are trying to get all of that information into the systems where we can actually use them. Um, I had heard uh, and, and subsequently seen a uh, uh, unrelated or related uh, the school board has passed, or I, I saw a report, I've attached it with your packet. The school board has passed a resolution um, extending a veteran's exemption to, to, uh, for school taxes. We have not yet received that. As soon as we do, we will um, work with the county and make sure that anybody who is uh, eligible to receive that exemption will get it automatically. There should be no additional um, requirements, uh, assuming you're already getting the exemption. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, come and see me. Uh, I'd be happy to answer the questions as I can. But until we get the resolution from the school, we can't really move forward on that. Okay. That's it. Good information. Thank you, Scott. Um, <coughs> I think I'd like to call on Henry Van Perry's since he's, although he's a W for water department, I know he's here and probably just can't wait to get back out in the cold and go home and go to bed. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Have a little toddy for the body? <laughs> the camera was okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind if I? No, I don't on mind if you do. You, is not my strong you suit. stay right where you are. It's fine. Okay. I guess I'll uh, apologize for spending a lot of money the last uh, couple months. Our surprise of pump failure <clears throat> um, led to other problems. Uh, what happened was one of the pumps. The customers were calling, they had cloudy water. Air was in the, in the water caused by one of the pumps, turned out to be pump number one. And, you know, you can't tell if they're down on the ground or in the water, whatever. So the initial assumption was there's leaking in the pipes or we have a pump problem. So we pulled the pump and saw no problems. But having pulled it, or even before we decided to pull it, <coughs> The pump had been in there over 20 years, and uh, we thought it's time to replace it. As long as we're pulling it, put in a new one. So we put in a new one with the new pipe, turned it on, and we're pumping air. So it was determined that what's happened has, uh, I guess a lot of the homeowners have experienced the problem. The well kind of surrounding that uh, kind of clogs up, and the screen clogs up, and you're not getting enough water into the pump, so it's pumping air. So that appears to be the problem. <coughs> so there are a couple of possible solutions. One was which to put a variable frequency drive on that new pump so that we could throttle it down. Uh, the frequent variable frequency means the pump operates at the frequency that, by which it's driven. So if you're driving 60 cycles, that's its speed. If you slow that down, it pumps more slowly, and that's the, the theory of the variable frequency drive. Anyway, Jerry um, DeCores, the pump guy, just wasn't sure how he would manage all of the control, especially how to stop it. Anyway, uh, so we decided to go for a smaller pump, less capacity, but that meant he had to do some testing, so he pumped and measured and, you know, analyzed how much water we could pump before we started pumping air. So settled on a pump that uh, pumps about 150 gallons a minute instead of 220. And we put that in. So all in all, it was uh, a lot of work, a lot of expense, because the other, the other new pump is in the shed uh, for store. So that was pretty much that. We're operating fine now. Next thing is that that well probably needs to be rehabbed. And again, maybe some people here have had their wells rehabbed. Um, 
one of the concerns with that is um, they tend to use, they do use certain chemicals. I'm not sure what. I guess I'd say analogous to fracking, all right? These chemicals go in and break up uh, sludge or whatever is there, along with the, the pumping, the throbbing, or the shaking that they do. So anyway, we have to decide, determine, is the other well affected by this first well such that if we do the well rehab, would the second pump suck in some of the chemicals? We don't want that. So we'll have to see, do some tests to determine, uh, while pump one is running, do we see any drawdown in the other well, which would mean it's sucking water from that other well. So that remains to be done. And that's not an immediate uh, job, but it should be done over the next year or two. So that's uh, the biggest thing of the last few months. Um, so if we take a look at uh, things we want to do next year, and we're having a water board meeting tomorrow night, I'd like the, the crew to do a little prioritization. We have this well rehab to be done. We have pumping, piping in the pump house that from the point of the chlorine injection out to the floor, the pipe is quite severely deteriorated. Now, how long it would last, you know, no one knows, but it isn't the kind of thing that uh, you want to have wait for an accident. So we've had an exploratory dig outside. Bucky came over and Doug and Ellen, the operator, took some pictures and uh, I think we have enough information with that and the engineering drawings from the initial construction. So we can go out to bid, get uh, some estimates, and then go out to bid. So that's one, another job. Another one is the, uh, the standby tank is due for an inspection. Now that's something we've done every five years, but that's not a critical thing. So in terms of how much money we have, how much we want to spend next year, um, we just have to do a little prioritization. And, uh, that's what I want to address tomorrow night with the water board. I think the, other than that, you have the, the uh, report. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's all I really wanted to address tonight. If there are any questions, uh, feel free. You've been busy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of those things. It's, yeah. It's, it's nice to get resolved. It's, right. You know, it's a, it was a, it's a wake up call. You know, you find out mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're without one mm -hmm. of the two pumps. Right. Now you're down to one and you have no more backup. So mm -hmm. it's, a, as I say, a wake up call. Mm -hmm. On the rehab, are they, you got someone's going to give you an estimate of what it might run, Hank, and stuff like that? Or yeah. Or plan for this coming year? Yeah, Jerry uh, Gilnack knows of a couple of outfits that, would, that do rehab. I think both of them are in Connecticut. I haven't contacted them yet. Well, when you meet with the water board tomorrow night, please thank them for all the hard work and all the planning we, we and all the resol resolutions to all these problems. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Thanks for coming out on this cold night. Thank you. Yes, it is refreshing. I should say it is. <laughs> Another person who has come out on this really nippy night is someone who, and actually three of someone's who really made a difference on Saturday when they, two weeks ago, Saturday when they planted trees yet again all over Red Hook and had what looked like a great time doing it. And I just can't tell you and your team, Nancy Gusky, how wonderful Red Hook looks. Some of these beautiful trees are just stunning. It has made such a difference. So we're hoping you'll give us a little report on that day of tree planting. Sure, please. Sure. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. fine. We can hear you. Um, well, I'm just going to mention I haven't been here for a while, so I 
Yeah. We've missed you. Sure. <laughs> we have. Um, that we were at Hard Scrabble Day, and uh, we you know, pass out all the information about tree issues and spread goodwill. And we have a very nice day and, and enjoyed it. So um, we had kind of a quiet fall. Um, we replaced a tree on Gusky Road, and we did plant the commemorative tree for Paul mm -hmm. Fredericks at St. Margaret's, and a site that might not have been there had he not valued the historic significance of the place. And you've mentioned a lot of the things that I was going to mention here, but you know, he's a longtime resident and a familiar figure in the village of Red Oak. I always love to see him with his hat, and his vest, and mm -hmm. strolling around the village. And um, he has a great love and interest of, in, about the history of Red Oak. And he knows every nook and knows and loves every nook and cranny of Red Oak. And I know that because I planted trees in the wrong place at St. Margaret's. <laughs> and he was such a gentleman. He said, you know, I think those trees are planted on Hannaford Land. <laughs> so um, I went and met with him. And he was so gracious and such a gentleman. Mm -hmm. And he showed me where the line was. And he knows where every line, every border is in this town. And um, I think he so loves the town of Red Oak. And I'm not going to mention um, the, you know, the committees and things that he has done. Um, but he was also instrumental in uh, creating uh, Hard Scrabble Day. And um, the Chamber of Commerce information booth was his contribution also. He gathered up people and they all donated their time and, and their materials to build that. And there's, a, there's a, a quote that I really love that I think applies to Paul. It says, to plant trees is, is to give body and life to one's dreams for a better world. And I think Paul's dreams have always been for the betterment of Red Hook. And I, I just like that quote so much, nice. it applies to him. Um, so the tree is there. We have a plaque, which will be placed there. Um, I don't know if I should put it there now or just keep it over the winter, but they're really designed to be pretty rugged, so I think mm -hmm. we will place it there and hope that Paul, when he feels better, will be able to make a visit there. Um, so um, moving on, uh, in December, um, we will apply for Tree City status as we normally do. We've been in Tree City for six years. We had the growth awards for the last two years. Um, we're still hoping to find someone to fill a spot on the Tree Committee. Um, I have approached a person and uh, they just weren't in a position now to, to do it. So I'm hoping that somebody will, will um, you know, uh, take an interest. The other thing is um, there was a recent news release from the DEC uh, that um, the Emerald Ash Borer is now in Broome in Westchester counties. And I know I have mentioned this before, but there are 900 million ash trees in New York State. That's 7% of all of our trees. And humans are primarily the culprits for why it has spread because we move firewood, which is infested, and it, that's how it gets spread most of the time. Um, there is a quarantine. I know we all know that you cannot move untreated firewood more than 50 uh, miles from the source. So, um, you know, I just want to remind people of that so that we can try to avoid um, it. Because once the tree has it, there isn't much hope for it. It usually takes three or four years for the tree to die. Um, you know, and if you see symptoms, um, there is a hotline to call. Um, it's 1-866-640-0652 if you see symptoms. That is, the canopy is looking kind of sparse. Um, woodpeckers are, are at the tree probably trying to get the larva, the, e the EAB larva. Um, when they're newly infested, it's in almost impossible to know. They, the beetle emerges in May and June, 
And it leaves a D-shaped hole, but it is tiny. And um, I think very hard to detect. They often, if there's some suspicion, they do strip some of the bark, and they see the serpentine, you know, tunnels of, that they um, that the uh, larva does. Um, so, and there might be um, at the called epicuric sprouts on the tree, around where some of the dead tissue and the live tissue is. They'll get a little, like little sp sprout of a um, branch to come out there. But that isn't that doesn't mean the tree is doing well. That means that it's in trouble. So I just wanted to, you know, remind people. We sort of say, oh, you know, EAB, and we move on. But it's something we have to really pay attention to. And I think that's it. Let's see. Are there other trees that are affected as well? No, it only the, the EAB only affects ash trees. All ash trees. Mm -hmm. And we've really lost many. It was found in 2009, and it's just spread right across right. and in some of the Canadian provinces, too. Right. So. That's terrible. Okay. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. And thank, thank you, committee, for all they oh, do. Oh, yes. Well, listen, they're here, and they work very hard. They, they do. They really do. They come to meetings. They have ideas. We, were, we just met before this meeting. And... Um, so, well, I know that we, we talked earlier, Nancy, in the spring, and, mm -hmm. and um, about the beauty of the flowering trees through the village and through the town, mm -hmm. village especially, because that's where it was started. Well, it's just amazing, and Brenda was, yeah. Brenda was instrumental in all of all that. It's sure. just, yeah. it's yeah. a remarkable um, sight to see all those beautiful flowering trees. Yeah, it's and you know, I think such an addition. It is an addition, and um, not only are they beautiful, but you know, they're really keeping us healthier. Right, and, right. Um, yeah. Well, let's hope we can find somebody who's a real good digger <laughs> to help you. <laughs> well, we do. We do have some very good <coughs> <traditions. laughs> Okay, thank you so much, yeah, Nancy you. and Eleanor and Linda, um, there is a building inspector report. Jim, I think that's yours to give. It's a little bit new format. Yes, I have that there. Let me see. First, I've got it. the different types of permits that were issued. There were 16 different <coughs> permits, six being a building permit for residential. Uh, CO fire inspection fee, hot tub spa, residential permit fee, and sheds and so on. The total money received was $1,780 for those permits. See. There were 35 inspections. That includes the follow-up inspections, you know, on the permits as well as um, Different miscellaneous inspections, uh, uh, you know, during the stages of construction. And then there were a number of fire safety inspections um, as well. And a lot that are listed as miscellaneous inspections of one another, which is includes complaints and things like that, 20, of which there were 24 inspections by our building and zoning department. And that's that. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Harry, do you have a purchasing report? I do. Okay. Um, Please. <laughs> things are continue to be busy there. Um, one of the things that uh, we did in uh, uh, the Ted did in the last month was replace the conference room chairs, the ones that there we've had for many years. They have an S kind of a leg configuration, and with use that leg S configuration has gotten lower and lower and lower. So they got to be very uncomfortable. So we replaced those with new cha new chairs and. Um, Come in and try them out sometime, folks. Uh, we've ordered ceiling fans uh, for the, the highway garage. They'll be installed within the next uh, few weeks. We, we, uh, Ted uh, uh, went through a series of quotes for uh, snow removal on the sidewalk, and 
that 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 uh, has been completed, um, and the, the quote was uh, won by uh, Kuhn and Sons. And we have a plan to install to, to deal with the insulation problem in in this ceiling. Um, we have discovered that much of the insulation that was put up there many years ago has been compromised. It's kind of piled up and and pulled out of place and and. Uh, there, there, in many of these, oh, in many areas of the ceiling, there's no insulation. So we're going to ourselves, um, with, a, with a few people, work, work on that and get that put back there and, and replace whatever needs to be necessary in the way of the insulation. This insulation, by the way, is just directly above, above the ceiling, and it's uh, reasonable to be able to deal with it uh, easily. Great. I would say I would say that is a <clears throat> um, the cost of a hundred percent job on this insulation is immense. Um, the cost of this job, which would probably be I would consider an eighty percent job, uh, would is is very small. Probably about a t one tenth of the, of the hundred percent job. Uh, so as a first step, for and, and hopefully it'll last for. An, Many of the years, it seems reasonable to go forward uh, in, in in the direction uh, this the direction we're, we're we're going to approach initially. I'm sure it'll be an improvement. It can be pretty drafty in here, so that's good. I'm glad to hear that's underway. Um, I have one police report, and that is from the Red Hook Police Department, and it is for the month of October. There were various and sundry uh, calls. There were total number of incidents for the reporting period were 56. There were eight arrests and 22 tickets issued. <coughs> so that was in the town of Red Hook. And has anyone a recycling center report? No report, but TJ J called just before I came tonight, and um, he he did report that there's been some dumping again back there. Okay. And I think he's going to contact Teresa about perhaps borrowing some orange cones to block off the recycling center when the highway department's open and he's not. And um, also. Uh, we we're beginning to coordinate a, another e-waste collection for January 17th, Martin Luther King uh, Day of Service, and uh, we'll be partnering with Bard College in the vill both villages this time. And so, uh, thankfully, TJ was uh, agreeable to all of this. That's great. We, we what was the date year, again? January 17th. 17th. Mm -hmm. okay. Stay tuned for more details. And last year, it was really cold and snowy, <laughs> as <laughs> Teresa remembers. And, um, that's great. I know the residents appreciate that a lot, to have that um, e-waste uh, opportunity locally. Mm -hmm. So, get Tivoli on board this year. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good, good. Um, so I think we've covered all of the highway. highway. Oh, I, I checked her off. <laughs> checked her <laughs> off and then just went right on by. Yes, I know you are. Come on up. Come tell us what you have to say. This um, announcement went out uh, as a <coughs> went out or is going out as a press release. Okay. So I'm just reading it so the people who Good. are watching. Good. Um, the town of Red Hook Highway Department would like to remind the residents of the townwide snow ordinance in effect during the winter season. Town law prohibits parking on town roads from November 15th until April 1st between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Parking on the street at any time during the storm is an obstruction to snow removal and prevents employees from thoroughly removing the snow. And you can get ticketed for that. So we're giving out warnings for people who are not aware that it's after November 15th, and um, eventually you may get a ticket if you still park on the street. Residents living along Town Road should remove basketball hoops or any other roadside obstacles from the town maintained right of way in preparation for the winter snow plowing season. The Highway Department will not be responsible for damage to anything left in the right of way. 
And please do not plow, shovel, or otherwise put snow into the streets. It's our job to keep the roads safe. We appreciate your co cooperation in these matters, and we look forward to spring. <laughs> As do we. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. Okay, so Bill, you've been very patient, and, and I don't know if you have an Ag and Open Space Committee report. Uh, no, the, uh, the meeting was canceled in January. Okay. Uh, or in um, October. It's so. Uh, um, but there, uh, no, there is no report from Ag and Open Space. Committee. Okay. So well, that's the ZRC report. Yeah, yeah that's coming. So uh, let's do the intermunicipal task force. Uh, yeah, well, the 120th report, November 2014, um, shows that at our weekly meetings in October and November of this year, the uh, task force discussed the letters of notification to the town of Reddick by the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority of their intent to provide water supply services and wastewater services to the Hoffman Farm Project. And uh, the task force agreed to, by consensus, to support the uh, Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority proposal. The task force also revisited the matter of noise regulations in the RD one and a half acre zoning uh, district with respect to noises generated by agricultural activities. This is a continuing uh, review. This month, with the town planner, the task force also reviewed the submissions by the architect for the Hoffman Farm Project. Mike Watkins in a letter which he dated um, September 5, 2014, in which he commented on the traditional neighborhood development, the design standards, the landscape standards, the architectural standards, and specifically on the definition of a TND uh, cottage. And uh, by consensus, the task force agreed to recommend to the town a zoning change in the TND to raise the minimum standard defining a cottage from 1,200 square feet to 1,300 square feet to accommodate the request of the developer. Okay. So is that something that, that we need um, on the agenda the next time we meet, Bill? Well, not yet. I think the way it was left is that the planner for the town has to sit down with the architects for the developer okay. and tell them, um, you know, what the opinion was of the task force. Um, there are certain <clears throat> projected um, um, design designs for units that are uh, presented by the developer, which would accommodate this uh, minimum 1,200, 1,300, and on up. Um, the original TND standards in our zoning uh, established that minimum at 1,200 feet, 1,200 square feet. The developer obviously saying they'd like to have larger square footage. So that's the discussion, but it looked like a compromise might be at 1,300, which would accommodate what they have in mind and perhaps uh, contain the, the, the project to, along the, the, the scope of uh, what's intended by the uh, TND. Mm -hmm. So that it, it's up to the planner now to meet with the architect, and so it'll come back in another, I don't know how long it takes him, but they're working pretty uh, pretty quickly on it. Good. <clears throat> okay, so we'll have more to come. Great, thank you. Um, Brenda, I'll bet you have Conservation Advisory Council. I, I do not. <clears throat> you do not. Okay. Um, what do we have here? Does anyone have a rec commission report? Um, I do. Okay. Um, and to summarize it, um, for the most part, the, the report is, is a, a, a list of the activities that are wrapped up in the fall to close down the park, um, repair things that need to be repaired, shut off the water uh, and, and the various utilities and um, put things in shape for, for start up next spring. Uh, the one project that is uh, must be done this fall is the wetlands mitigation of the rec park extension. There was a, a small wetland there 
that was to be moved. That has to be done this fall, and we're uh, we're um, waiting waiting for the the plants to die so we can more easily uh, identify the locations to deal with this and to and to move forward with it. It's not a major project. It will, it'll be done in a day or two once once we start. Um, basically, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Harry. I'd like to circle back, if I may, um, just to say that there is in correspondence a letter that relates to the Conservation Advisory Council, and it was received today. Um, it is to me. Dear Sue, I have served on the Conservation Advisory Board for the Town of Red Hook for the last seven years. My current term will expire in December of 2014, and I will step down at that time. It has been a very rewarding experience on a very valuable committee, but I feel I will be unable to devote the necessary time required going forward. I commend the town for its sensitivity to environmental issues and its support for the work of the CAC. I'm grateful for the opportunity over the last several years to serve the town in a minor role. I wouldn't say minor, but anyway. And am an admiration of all the people who devote so many hours to town affairs. This is a great place to live. All the best, Jane Ferguson. So with that letter of resignation, we have a vacancy on the Conservation Advisory Council. And um, we're looking for someone who would, is interested and talented to step up. And thank Jane Ferguson for all her work. She's, she's been a wonderful trooper in the conservation efforts. Um, is there anyone who has a St. Margaret's committee report? I do not, sir. Okay. And senior service, Brenda, do you have anything from the senior service? Uh, they did uh, sponsor the safety presentation on Saturday that was uh, given by the county sheriff, and uh, I, did, I came at the end, and they had had 11 attendees, but it's going to be on Panda, and uh, the chair, chair of the senior service committee said it was uh, very informative. They covered a lot of territory, so um, if folks want to see it on Panda, that would, I'm sure they can they can find it. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Brenda. <clears throat> In terms of Sister Cities Committee, I received a note from Jill Lundquist, who has served on that committee since its initial um, formation, and Jill has uh, regretfully submitted her um, resignation and. I, she will be sorely missed. She has served as secretary, volunteer secretary, and um, she keeps us straight. I don't know who we're going to get to, mm -hmm. to whip us into shape, but she's uh, been a wonderful committee member, and I'm going to miss her terribly. So we do have a vacancy on the Sister Cities Committee. Is there a Trails Committee report? Uh, not a report, but Howie uh, sent a few notes that said that at their last meeting, um, their new uh, member, Anna, and maybe it's Anna, uh, she presented a letter to the committee which she wants to distribute in the area of the new rec park um, to let the people know about the continuing developments there and that um, you know, there's a little walking path and everything. Great. Um, there was an, just another thing, Bill, that I, I meant to mention when you were giving the Intermunicipal Task Force report, that Sarah Imboden has, is willing to serve on that yes. committee. And I don't remember whether we made a motion to that effect or if it's necessary. Well, if, it's, if we didn't make a motion, I would make it. Okay. <laughs> is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 She's already been attending. She's yeah. a very, very valuable asset to Right, right. Okay. I think I remember us talking about her last week, but I didn't remember whether we'd done that. Good. Thank you. And finally, the Zoning Review Committee. We have some report on that. Well, the, Z, uh, the Zoning Review Committee met in October in a joint meeting with the Ag and Open Space Committee. And as a result of that meeting, there was language proposed by the, uh, by the ZRC and the Ag and Open Space Committee of a change in the zoning with respect to the definition of agricultural fences and exemption of agricultural fences from our 
zoning law. So that, um, that proposed language, uh, when the board considered it at our last business meeting, um, was <clears throat> left up to an additional aspect uh, to add to that definition some language concerning spite fences. The, the subjects of uh, agricultural fencing and spite fencing kind of run hand in hand. So it was the board's feeling that, um, that the town board should not consider uh, referring to our town attorney for a resolution to change zoning um, the definition of agricultural fencing without also including a, a definition of spike fencing. At the last week's ZRC meeting, um, unfortunately there wasn't a quorum because there were a couple of conflicts um, that night, but uh, there was a, a full discussion for an hour, um, thanks to a lot of research done by Ann Rubin, but on the subject of what language would be used to, to define a spike fence, it's a little bit of a difficult issue but we're getting some good research done and passing it on to Steve. Uh, and, um, and so uh, that's on for the next meeting of the ZRC, which will not be in December, but will be January um, 2015. So at the first meeting in January, the second Thursday in January, the ZRC should be able to propose the language on the spike fence. At that time, it would join the proposal for the agricultural fence and come to the town. Great. Good work, thank you. And you have, I believe, um, a person who is interested oh, in yes. joining that. I forgot to say that. Michael Robertson has written to the, um, to the town and has indicated an interest in joining the um, ZRC. Um, and the, um, everybody seems to be in favor of that. He's been a member of the uh, Ag and Open Space Committee, but he would come on as the Community at large member number three. That's a, a vacancy which has been open on the ZRC, mm -hmm. and he would be willing to serve on that. And I would propose that. Is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> and just a couple of uh, pieces of correspondence. For your information, we've heard again this year from Duchess Land Conservancy. They have a stewardship associate uh, who works for Duchess Land Conservancy who goes out and monitors the um, easements that we are in partnership with one or another agency. And um, this is just to let you know that they have done ground monitoring of Bazinski Acre. Uh, 84.7, almost 9, 0.79 acres of conservation. They've monitored that and um, walked the property and documented conditions found and found nothing that would require a follow-up. In addition, they did ground monitoring of the Gregg Farm, 159.92 acres of conservation easement. Same result. Again, the Harrison Jones, 16.22 acres, and the monitoring will continue on all of these. Found nothing for follow-up. Routine monitoring of the Jones property is 67.06 acres, and filed that report. There is no follow-up required. Routine ground monitoring of the Kalina Farm, LLC, for 149.64 acres of conservation easement. And based on the steward's report, there's nothing requiring follow-up from their office. The Karpinski, 33.3, almost 32 acres. Same thing, that's been monitored and found to be in compliance. The Mead Farm of 84 acres conservation easement was monitored, and um, all of these are scheduled for an aerial monitoring in the winter of 2014-15, just as an additional piece of information. Routine uh, monitoring of additional 16 acres of the Mead Farm, same thing. And routine ground monitoring of the Mead 82 acre conservation easement. 
by Duchess Land Conservancy. The Miglarelli 27.53 acre conservation easement and the Steiner 224 acre conservation easement and the Sturges 34.88 conservation easement and the Three Pond Farm 61.139 acres and again, same result, no follow-up necessary. They will do an annual monitoring. And the routine ground monitoring of Trezza's farm, uh, the total acreage of 114.5 acres. And so um, Duchess Land Conservancy has provided this report for our um, records that they have monitored and found in compliance all of those acreages that they are responsible for monitoring on an annual basis. Very impressive work. Um, there is a letter from Bridget Barclay in regard to the Rokeby water system and the Fairways water system. Copies of the proposed rate schedule and operating budgets. And this is just a routine report to us. Um, they are having a public hearing to receive comments <coughs> on the water and waste, the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater's uh, proposed rates for these systems at the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority on Wednesday, November 19th. That's tomorrow at 3.40. So if anyone would like to go and hear about it, they have not only the, the Rokeby system but a number of others. And finally, a letter from Central Hudson reminding us, it is the season, that all decorative temporary attachments to utility poles require Central Hudson's prior approval. So that we can contact Central Hudson, um, and I have centralhudson.com, um, or you may call 486-5962. Um, and if anyone wants their rules and regs in that regard to using the polls, they can certainly have a copy of this from our office. In fact, I'll leave it with you soon, uh, sure. and uh, they can get it from you. There's an application for decorative temporary attachments to utility polls. Thank you. Just so you know, you have to get permission. And that's what I have on my list of to-dos. Has anyone got anything else? No. 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 Brenda, anything? No, that's it. Jim? Nope. Okay, Sue, are you happy? With I'm fine, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Is there any further public comment before we call it a night? Yes, Linda. Will uh, there be benches put in at some time along the sidewalks? Or do you have to go for a separate grant for that? Yeah, if it's not included in this grant, right. then of course it would depend on um, what the homeowner wanted because I think in most cases it would have to be on private property. So that's something we can examine in the future. Also, I believe the county, is, the county has uh, some benches available. Did anyone hear about that? I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I... We'll explore it. Nancy has noticed as well as myself that people are using the sidewalks mm -hmm. and uh, talking on the benches. Yeah. Relax. Yes, they do. It's, good. it's really, mm -hmm. it's really a nice feature oh, along nice. the sidewalks. It's great. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time. It's work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. before we adjourn for the night, I I need to ask the board to go into executive session and attorney client, um, and we'll come back out to close the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.